Hi, in a previous tutorial, we did all the groundwork required to configure a project to use Hibernate. We created a new project, we added the Hibernate library, and we added the JDBC library. So now we are all set to write code that uses Hibernate. Now, before we start, let's look at what we would need to do in order to save an object to the database if we were not using Hibernate. Because this is this is the scenario we're going to code in this tutorial. We're going to take an object and we'll use Hibernate to save that object to the database. Now, what would we need to do if uh, we were not using um, Hibernate in order to save an object to the database? Assuming we are starting from the scratch, we don't have anything in place and uh, except for what we did in our uh, previous tutorial, which is we included all the required jars and we have a project. Now, if we are starting from the scratch, what would we have to do if we're just using JDBC drivers? First, we would have to do the JDBC configuration. We need to tell JDBC which database we are actually interested in. We need to give um, the, you know, the IP, the port number, the user ID, password. So uh, this kind of configuration has to be done for the JDBC to allow it to connect to the database. Okay. Next, we need to write the model object, which is the object that we want to save. Uh, let's take an example user object. You know, this is the example that we took earlier. In order to save the user object, first we need to have the object in place. We need to write the class. So this needs to be done. Next, we need to have a service method that instantiates this model object. We need some method which provides the values to the object and creates an object in the first place, which, uh, which is required to be saved. The next step is the database design. Now I have a user object and I need to save it to the database. Uh, before I do, before I write code to save, I will need to have a table in place in my database, which, which holds this user object. So depending on the fields that I want to save, I will have to create the tables and uh, have the corresponding columns so that I can save the object data into that table. The next step is to actually write the DAO layer. We need to write code, which is a method which takes this object and it generates the SQL queries. It, it uses the JDBC connection and uh, it creates a connection. It uh, runs the query and it inserts the data to the database. So these are at a high level, the steps required in order to save an object to the database if we were not using Hibernate. Now let's see how Hibernate changes the whole picture. First of all, the JDBC database configuration, yes, this is still required even if we're using Hibernate because uh, no matter what framework you would use, you would still need to tell that framework what the database is. There's no way the framework can automatically find it out. So we need to tell Hibernate what database we are interested in, what database Hibernate needs to connect to in order to save the data. So this is done in Hibernate by using the Hibernate configuration file. It's an XML file that we will write and uh, this will give information to Hibernate as to what database it needs to connect to. Secondly, the model object. We will need to have a model object because Hibernate needs to know what object it needs to save and uh, we will have a model object and we will configure it in such a way that Hibernate knows what needs to be saved and how. So this is again something that will, you know, it will be more clear when we start writing the code, but yes, the model object needs to be written and uh, we will configure Hibernate to, uh, you know, get data out of this model object by using annotations. The third step which we saw is uh, the service method. So the service method will have an instance of the model object and normally what it would do is it would pass the model object to a data layer which uses JDBC. Instead, uh, in the Hibernate way of doing things, the service method would um, pass the object to Hibernate APIs. The method would use Hibernate APIs directly or pass it on to a data layer which uses Hibernate APIs. So it's actually the Hibernate APIs which do the save of the model object. Database design, it's not needed. We'll have a look at how uh, this is done. You, you don't really have to create a table for every object. As long as you configure the model object the right way, Hibernate creates the tables itself. And finally, the last point, which is creating the data layer. 
where you map the object to queries. This is the biggest uh, challenge when it comes to writing um, data layer code for converting objects into a relational model. So this major step is actually not needed when we're using Hibernate. As I mentioned here, the service method directly calls the Hibernate APIs and the Hibernate APIs take care of saving the object. We don't have to write this DAO method where we take the objects, pull it apart, write SQL queries, execute them. All that is totally bypassed when we're using Hibernate. So to summarize, what are the things we need to do? First, we need to write the Hibernate configuration in order to provide the database details and other configuration to control the way Hibernate works. The second step, we need to write the model object and we'll be using annotations to configure the model object so that Hibernate knows where to save the model object. Third, we need a service method which uses Hibernate in order to save the model object. So our service method will probably be a simple class with the main method. We will instantiate some test objects of the model that we have written and we will use a Hibernate API to save those, to save those objects. And these two steps can be easily skipped. So let's start coding. The first of the three steps is to write the Hibernate configuration file. So I'll right click new file. I will call this configuration file as hibernate.cfg.xml. So this is the default name for the Hibernate configuration file. If you stick to this name, then you would not need to specify anything to Hibernate, but say you're using a different configuration file, then you would have to pass the configuration file name so that Hibernate knows where the configurations are. The easier way is to just stick to the default so that Hibernate searches for this file, finds it, and then you know looks up the configuration details. I will save this Hibernate configuration file in the SRC folder. I'll say finish. Okay, the configuration file is blank right now. We will need to type in all the details that uh, we need to provide to Hibernate, like what our Postgres database details are and other things. Uh, to get a head start, what we can do is we can pull up some of the configuration files that have come with us with our Hibernate uh, download. So if you look up uh, the Hibernate directory, there is this project folder. And inside this project folder, you have all these example code. So what I do here is I search for hibernate.cfg.xml. There are there are a lot of configuration files. So let's let me just open one of these. So here you can see this is an example configuration file with all the required all the required uh, information so what we need to do is we need to just change the values according to what we have so in this example they are using the h2 database so in this case we will have to just replace this with our postgres uh, database details and of course if you're using h2 you can use most of the values here as is so just let's select all copy this and paste it here note that some of the some of the you know the search results might not have all of the details so let's look at this one yeah as you can see here this does not have all of the details so in this case it's uh, it's not a good idea to pull this out and copy it look for xml files which have uh, database connection settings jdbc connection pool all these things. So you can easily make it out by looking at the file contents. Make sure you take a XML file which has all these contents. So I have uh, this file here. I'll leave all the starting information as is. Now here are the database connection settings. So I need to provide the database connection details for my Postgres database. So how do I get the driver class and the connection URL and all these details? Again, a Google search should give you all the information required for the database that you are connecting to. So what's the first value? We have connection driver class. So this is the driver class in our JDBC driver. Uh, in my case, I think it is, yeah, here's a driver class. It is org.postgres.sql 
dot driver. So it will be org dot driver. It's the small case, and there you go. We have the driver class set. Now, what is the connection URL? Again, a quick Google search told me that the connection URL for Postgres is this. So JDBC colon Postgres colon double slash host colon port slash database. So in my case, since I have it on my local machine, the host would be localhost. If you have set it up on a different machine, then you would have to give the IP of that machine. Now port by default for Postgres is 5432. Again, depending on your database, you will have to look up the port number. The database itself that we are connecting to, let me create a new database. I will call this Hibernate and uh, call it Hibernate DB. So I will have to create this database inside uh, my Postgres installation so that uh, I will use this database and all my tables that I'm going to create in this program will be inside this Hibernate DB database. So here I have my uh, PG admin console. So I say new database, Hibernate DB. I'll leave everything else as the default and say, okay, this will create the database for me. Okay, now the user ID and password is what you would have mentioned when you were installing the database. In my case, the user ID is Postgres and the password is password. Okay, now we are done with the database connection settings. Now Hibernate will know which database to connect and what driver to use. And since we have already specified, we have supplied the driver jar, Hibernate is all set to connect to this database.